Before we dive into today's video, I want to do a little update on my Mega 65 build. If you watched that video, you know I didn't get a chance to install my CR1220 battery backup to hold my time and date in my firmware. And I discovered that the spacers for my disk drive mounts were not the correct ones. The mega folks were kind enough to send over some replacements. I put those on and the disk drive is now seated properly in its case. While I was adding those additions to the Mega 65, I did realize that I didn't have a 1351 mouse for things like Geos. And so I went online to check it out and for 70 bucks I could find one, but I had all these USB mice laying around. Surely there was something I could, no, I, can't I just plug this into the Mega 65 and use all these USB mice that I have? I need a dongle that allows me to connect the universal USB head to a DB9 adapter found on common retro computers from Atari and Commodore and on my Mega 65. Luckily, retrohacks.net to the rescue. The first step of this journey was to visit retrohacks.net where I would find the Mouster project in all its glory along with some tips, tricks, and some 3D models for a new case, although I don't think I'll need that. About a month later, this arrived, this little package with the Mouster inside. You can see here the Mouster is a universal USB head class device to DB9 connector. That's that little connector on the side of our retro computers. Inside this package, we have a firmware upgradable microprocessor. On this side, we have a USB port that serves not only to connect a mouse, but also to upgrade that firmware, which we'll demonstrate here in a little bit. Here, we're gonna go ahead and connect it for the very first time out of the package, no firmware upgrades to see if it will work with the Mega 65. I need to remind myself of some keystrokes. It's been a while since I've used the Mega 65 to get to the configuration screens. All right, let's go ahead and plug this into port one, not port two. Now, what we're gonna do is turn this on and see if we just have any mice activity. And we do. So we're obviously getting some kind of signal from the mouse. Now let's go ahead and check it and see if it actually works as a mouse. And we're gonna do this in the configuration utility in the Mega. So we'll go to the configure Mega 65 and move the mouse in here. It's, oh gosh, we've got something, but it's just not working. So back to the drawing board. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out how to get this to work. Let's set this to 1351. Let's go ahead and try these settings. And that's going to work for, no, no, that didn't work either. So as a matter of fact, that's worse. We don't have anything. And after about 10 minutes of fiddling around with the configuration, I determined that out of the box, this thing does not work. So it was time to check to see if we could upgrade the firmware. But before we do that, we need to find out what firmware we have. And we do that by shoving a FAT32 formatted USB drive in there. We turn it on. The mouster folder is created on our USB drive. We go inside and we find an INI file, the mouster INI file, which verifies our firmware. So I made a note of that, 3.8.1743. I jumped over to this website. I checked and lo and behold, there was an upgrade, 3.11. So I went ahead and downloaded that file. Once that was downloaded, I decompressed that folder, checked the, cha checked the change log. And look at that, added Commodore. 1351 support. That's probably what I needed. So now what we're going to do is drag that firmware down to that USB drive. We will eject that drive, remove it from my Mac, plug it back into the mouster, turn it back on, and the firmware is magically upgraded. That's all there is to it. If you did want to verify, pull it back out, plug it back into your Mac, pull up the INI file, and you can see here firmware upgraded. Now feeling really good about my firmware upgrade, I go back into the Mega 65. I go ahead and ensure we're back in 1351 mode and we are in using the mouse. Look at that, the plugged in serial USB mouse works. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try something different. I know it works with a corded mouse. What about a wireless mouse? What about this Vixing mouse? By the way, if you're interested in this mouse, check out the video description. I have a link to a review of this mouse. Plugged in, it's got the dongle in, and after it wakes the mouse up, everything is perfect. The mouster is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, allowing me to use a USB mouse on a DB9 connector compatible computer. I'm feeling really good about this device. Let's try it with some software. Let's get out of that configuration utility and try it with something called Yaped32, which is a Mega 65 specific program. It's been created specifically for the Mega 65 so that we can create graphics on screen. Mouse works perfectly as you can see in this demonstration. 
The Mouster works in Mega 65 mode. Let's check in C64 mode using the Art Studio 1351 mouse software. Software designed specifically for using the 1531 mouse. And as you can see, everything seems to work perfectly here as well. So this was a great time to demonstrate the power of the Mega 65 and C64 mode. Here I am running the Art Studio in 40 megahertz mode. Check how smooth it is when I scroll across the screen. Now, let's go ahead and change that back from 40 megahertz to the standard one megahertz and watch what happens as I try and scroll. You'll notice obviously it takes a lot longer to scroll across the screen. If you're using a 1351 mouse on an 8-bit Commodore computer, you would be remiss if you didn't talk about GEOS. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load GEOS in C65 or Mega 65 mode. Here I am, not with a mouse, but I'm trying to configure the mouse using a joystick. It's painful and it's fraught with error, as you can see. It turns out that the Mega 65 version of GEOS is not quite ready for prime time. However, after messing around a little bit, I was able to get the mouse work, as you can see here. And it works well when it works. However, when I hit the little cancel button to say, hey, let's go ahead and try something else, I get this. That completes this fast load on the Mouster on the Mega 65. Would I recommend this device? You bet, it's cheaper than finding an original Commodore mouse and it works with all of your USB mice. Go out and get you one. If you have a Mega or any other Commodore or Amiga computer, you are going to appreciate the Mouster. By the way, check out the companion blog post on the Mouster. There you'll find additional information and all the links you need to use a modern mouse on a retro computer. Retro combs, out.